The RBA has come out and actually paused rates, which to some was a surprise and to others was pretty much common sense given how the economy is actually slowing down. What's very interesting about the interest rates being paused at this moment is it's not actually an obvious move. You've got some sectors that are actually booming. We've got luxury car sales through the roof. And on the other hand, you've got retail spending, which is falling through the floor and could potentially lead us into a per capita recession as of next quarter. If you're interested in what my thoughts are around interest rates, what this could mean and moving forward, what does it look like for the housing market, then definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now, if you are interested in a few property memes as well as some more updates daily, then definitely go check me out on Instagram, follow me. You'll find the link in the description below or you can search Personal Finance with Ravi. Be sure to only follow the one with the blue tick because that's the one that's verified. Everything else is a scam and I will never DM you about how trading is going and ask you for money. With that, let's continue. Now, despite all the noise, property prices are going to drop by 30%, they're going to increase by 10%. We were in a property boom. So let's zoom out and look at a graph of property prices and what they've actually been doing. What I've got here on screen is the housing price growth for Australia, the PropTrack housing price index. And what you'll find is we're pretty much here. <laughs> and uh, what you can see is all the noise that we've heard over the last eight to nine months is just this little portion here. Now this graph is only till 2016. So you can only imagine when we extrapolate this out into like 1970s, 1980s, you're gonna see that these little blips are nothing more than that. And that is the importance of being in real estate because what you're looking at is the long-term game not getting shaken out in periods like this or in 2019 when you had APRA come in it's a similar story with the GFC we thought we were going to get affected but we didn't get as affected as many people thought and then within those markets there are more markets so it can be really confusing especially when you see headlines just going there's so much fear and everything's dropping to when you actually zoom out and say I'm playing the long game here imagine going and staying out of the market because you thought property prices were going to fall further and now we're pretty much at a point where in 2023, prices are green. You've got some areas like Sydney up almost 5%. And when you start deep diving into some specific suburbs, they've already recorded double digit growth this year. And this is despite all the interest rates going up, the mortgage cliff that has never actually come. And yes, I will share my thoughts on this in a second, but you can see how by just following blindly some of these headlines by journalists, you can get caught out in this market. It's the same thing that was to be said in 2021. When you look at this graph, all it was doing was going parabolic. And if you were to go out there and say, and look at any of these articles, they were saying this is the best time to buy property prices are going through the roof you should definitely buy and then you'd hear a bunch of stories in case studies where I bought three months ago now I flipped my way to like a Lamborghini and a home in Vaucluse okay I exaggerated there because it didn't happen in three months but you get the point point. and what you want to do is take the emotion out get the logic on paper and say look if I am going to purchase something in today's market do I have enough of an emergency fund should I not be able to make those repayments on the current interest rate? Now, if the current interest rates actually increase by say 0.5 or 100 basis points, then you've got to see, are you able to still manage cash flow? Because the truth is when you get to points of such peak interest rates and the economy starts shaking, you know there's a matter of time before those interest rates start dropping, but we just don't know when. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I think we're going to end up closer to about 3% as a cash rate rather than the four plus percent that we're at already. Now, this graph here is about capital cities and regional areas. And what you'll find is that despite us going lower in 2019 on an annual basis in capital cities, we didn't actually see that in regional areas. Now, when we saw the boom in 2021, again, you saw regional areas outperforming capital cities. So the narrative was that everyone from regional areas were gonna move back into the capital cities and that's what's gonna happen. So prices in most regional areas will drop. Now, the areas that have been really affected are the luxury markets. So you look at your buyer and bays of the world and you see, yes, prices have calmed down from there. But if you annualize that and you average out all of the regional centers, you'll actually see that regional areas didn't drop as much as capital cities. Now, yes, we've had a strong uptick in the capital city market, but we're also seeing that recovery in some regional areas. Now, that's not to say that capital cities are better than regional centers or the other way around. I think the main point that I want you to take away from this is the big narrative was, hey, the pandemic's over. Everyone's going to move back into the capital cities and property prices in regional areas will drop. No one's going to want to rent there. And that's played out quite the opposite. You still have people moving out there even today. Given how low listings are in capital cities and regional areas, it's so hard to find a place to buy and it's so hard to find a place to rent. So if your workplace is still requiring you to, you know, work from home and you can work online, then a lot of people have picked up their bags and said, hey, I'm better off having a house for the same price I would have to compete on a one bedroom apartment, which I know I'm not going to be able to get because there's like 30 or 40 applications. Now, this table here is just an illustration of how different markets perform. This is why it's so important. You can't just throw a dart at the board and say, oh yeah, I'll just buy there. I heard it's good because you can see such a disparity between some 
areas and how they've grown versus how some areas have actually fallen. So this is focusing on the year to June 2023 all dwellings. So it's taking into consideration houses and units. National prices are down by 0.11. But if you just read that and said, oh, cool, okay, it's only been down slightly. If you had a property in Hobart, you're down 6.37%. But equally, if you had bought in regional South Australia, you're up 8.93%. And so the main point of this, it's not about the actual locations. It's about the fact that we look at one number, annual prices are up, but doesn't mean every single property is up. Now, the ongoing argument that we've always heard is, well, interest rates in Australia are so much lower than where they are in their counterpart being in UK or the US. So we need to continue to increase rates until we get to those positions. It doesn't matter what's happening in our local economy. It just means we need to get to the same level because inflation is the same everywhere, apparently. But the systems are different. And this is what I keep alluding to in my videos is that, yes, I think that we're going to peak out a lot earlier than we have seen the US. And I also think that they may start cutting a lot quicker than we would at a faster rate. Now, one of the reasons why this is so different in different areas is because of how our mortgages are actually set up with our banking system. So for instance, if you go out there into the US and you were buying a property, say in 2021, you were getting a rate of say three or 4%. The unique thing that they can do there is they can fix that rate for 30 years, right? So the life of the loan, they can just fix it in. And yes, some people did that and they must be cheering right now. But in Australia, the maximum you're able to really fix is probably for five years and slightly more if you're lucky, but it's usually about five years. So unless you went and fixed it for five years, you're probably on a variable rate or it's like a two, three year rate. And that's how you get the rollover, which is how people spoke about the mortgage cliff, because everything is now supposed to come to an end where all those fixed mortgages are now maturing in September, in October of this year. We've already had some of these loans actually go and revert back to a variable. But we really haven't seen this, you know, cause distress selling at the moment. Now, my thoughts around that is people sitting on the sidelines that have had their fixed rates there are going, well, it's going to end in September. And I can already see rates have gone up every single month or close to it. And I'm sitting here in February going, okay, I know it's coming. So how do I prepare? It's not like it just changed overnight. People with a fixed rate have had time to sit there and plan out their savings. If they were planning out their savings plan and their budgets, then they'd be in a position where they've probably already factored in the high interest rates, which is why we're not seeing as much distressed selling as people once thought we would. Could we see that increase in spring and summer? Yes, I would expect that there will be a portion of increased listings from distressed selling. Naturally in winter, you have listings fall, but in spring and summer, they actually start increasing. And this year, I think we could see the same. Uncertainty is a big factor when people want to sell their home. So in Australia, if you're selling your home, you're saying, well, I'm going to sell this home. I'm either going to rent, but there's nothing to rent. I'm either going to buy something in downsize, but there's none of that either. I may as well now have a budgeting plan so I can go and ensure that I hold the home I'm in. So the argument that we brought up around how interest rates need to be higher, we've got to look at mortgage repayments. And this is a big factor. When you look at increases in mortgage rates actually paid, it's very different. You've got Australia here, which is actually quite high. And when you compare that to the UK and the US, they're actually quite low. And the reason for this is how their banking system works with the fixed rates being so low for a long extended period of time. So imagine this, if you bought two years ago and you fixed it at 3% for 30 years, why would you actually sell? Because if you sell now, you now have to get a new mortgage on a new property, but that new property is going to have a new mortgage at a rate of maybe six, seven or 8%. So what people are doing is they're saying, well, okay, I'll just weather the storm. I know my interest rates are so low. I'm going to hold this property for as long as possible. And if I don't need to sell, I'm not selling. And so with every other market, like we're seeing in Australia, as listings go lower, you've got more pent up demand going for the existing stock. And that's why we're starting to see those prices rise. The counter argument to this is once listings increase, once supply increases, we're going to have the property market decline. But my argument to that is we've got a load of migrants coming into the country every single day. And what they're looking for is either a place to rent and they can't find one of those, they're going to have to buy something. With interest rates where they're at, we already have a supply crunch. I made a video about this. You can definitely go check it out here in more detail. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.